Good morning everybody, lovely to see you all. Welcome back to Meow's Crafts Podcast. This is episode 11, I think. I'm fairly certain it's episode 11 anyway. It's the one after the yarn show. So you might have all seen my um, podcast on um, East Anglia Yarn Festival. Can I just say thank you so much to everybody who watched Everybody who subscribed as a result of seeing that uh, um, episode, um, everybody who's commented, everybody who liked the video, I'm just amazed. I'm absolutely amazed. In fact, it's actually made me a little bit nervous because I used to not get very many views at all, and that's fine. I was quite happy. I was quite happy not having many views, uh, but oh my goodness, I'm just absolutely blown away. I really am. It's so lovely to see you all. I'm really, really excited. I'm really hoping that this is the start of um, something bigger. Let's see, shall we? Anyway, so I had an absolutely fantastic time at the East Anglia Yarn Festival. If you haven't by any chance seen my video, um, I will pop a link in the description below so you can have a look and see. Oh, excuse me, hot flush. Can you see the cheeks gone all red? I'm in a different place today. I thought I'd come and film in my bedroom because look, look at my little yarn selection. This is actually a um, CD cabinet. So if you're wondering what to do with all those old CD bookshelves and things, yarn store looks fantastic. My partner says it looks like I live in a yarn shop. Well, I do kind of really, don't I? Because I have yarn everywhere. Oh, and, and also because I'm sure you're sort of wondering what on earth this is. This is my, this is my tree. My, my my knitted tree um it's um one of those big sort of trees you get from um uh hobby craft and i painted it brown and then i wrapped it with um felting yarn felted it onto the tree and then i've sort of knitted all these leaves and added them on and it's 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 going to have more stuff on it eventually at the moment it it looks a little bit a little bit bare i've just hung a few sort of decorations on it just to sort of um give it a little bit more interest but um, the idea is I'm going to add lots more leaves and flowers and birds and bees and ladybirds and all that kind of stuff so but um, I, I started that that was my sort of project I started doing as I was beginning to recover from long Covid so I still I was still bed bound but um, I could knit the little leaves it was just a nice little thing that I could just do one at a time sort of sort of thing so so yeah so I kept Keep it, keep it there but I haven't, haven't done anything in, in it for a while but um I thought if I put it in the podcast then uh, people will see it and then maybe I'll feel a bit more sort of energized to actually do some more with it anyway um I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I have been working on this last week and then I just want to talk a little bit more about yarn festivals in general um I've, I've actually got some thoughts I want to share with you anyway, let's put it that way. Sounds a bit cryptic, doesn't it? Anyway, let me let me do what I've been making first. So, I think I showed you last time that I've been working on English paper piecing. So, okay, this is, a, <laughs> this is a mainly a yarny video sort of thing. I mainly talk about stitching, about, oh, about knitting and about crochet, but... I've been doing a bit of stitching and I wanted to share. So last time I showed you, I just started putting some paper um, hexagons together and I'd and I'd actually made all the little hexagons, which I'd sort of kept in a little box. Um, which I've left downstairs, so I can't show you now. Anyway, the box is almost empty because, ta-da, look, I've almost completed my piece. Well, in fact, I have actually done all the, the hexagons that I wanted to do and I've quilted them just by hand so it's a bit scruffy stitching but I'm quite happy with that my first attempt you know so this is this is going to be a case for my laptop for work so what I'm going to do is it's going to be sewn along those edges there this is going to be turned over because I'm not making a fancy edging not for my first one so that's going to be turned over and then it's going to have bias binding across there this is going to flap down that's also going to have bias binding and then it's just going to be sewn at the sides and then I'm going to either put poppers or velcro or 
something like that anyway just just sort of to hold it shut so it'll be a sort of a oh that looks a bit wonky <laughs> so it'll be a case kind of like that and then you, but you'll see a sort of like a stripe of bias binding I've got like a royal blue bias binding which I'm going to use on that so I am really really pleased with this this is all little bits of um uh I've had left over from other projects um and I've also had a couple of bits given to me as well um I have a friend gave me this lovely sort of Russian doll one um and a couple of other bits uh, bits and pieces that I can't spot just now oh she gave me the butterfly one as well so um yeah for a first attempt I'm quite happy with that actually it was I was quite daunted I've always been quite daunted by patchwork I'm not really the most accurate of sewers so I also thought, oh, not sure but really enjoyed it really enjoyed the process really liked the end result so well I've definitely got to do I was going to say I might do some again I am going to do some again because I want to make a little padded bag to go with it that's going to hold the laptop charger and also my um headphones that I use for work as well so I'm probably what I'm going to do is do a um another patchwork bag and it's going to have a little um a bit in the middle so like a separator divider so that then the, the, the two cables don't get tangled up so that's my plan so when it's when it's all finished I will show you um what that looks like so that was uh I was really quite pleased with that so next thing on my list I'm going to show you um baby cardigans I think I said I was uh, making baby cardigans and I've just remembered really annoyed myself I meant to look up the pattern name before I showed you this but I can't remember this is a pattern by Mariana Mel I've knitted with her um, patterns before she's a uh, she gives her patterns away for free on Ravelry she does lots and lots of baby patterns for preemies so she encourages people to knit for um, uh, charity um, to you know give stuff to babies that are in um, in special care units in hospitals and stuff like that super super handy if you've got like a really tiny baby or even just you want to knit something for a newborn because a lot of times um, sizing is for um, is for naught to three months and obviously if you've got a, like a six pound baby a naught to three months is going to drown it and you know you want to be able to put your nice knits on the baby from the day one don't you so anyway I knitted this for my my friend who's um, having a baby when I started knitting it I didn't know what sex she was having whether she was having a girl or a boy and um, I wasn't sure whether to ask I never, never quite know whether to ask anyway in the end I decided after I was halfway through knitting this I thought I will ask as you can see she said I'm having a girl and I said oh fantastic what colours do you like she says love pinks love fuchsias you know all that kind of thing so I thought fantastic so this one is going to have pink buttons on. I've only put two on so far because it does need a bit of blocking. Um, so I, I am going to block block that out. Um, and I just love this beautiful, really simple little cable. Just goes up the sides. Um, and then this lovely wide neck, um, which is which I always like. I always like a wide neck on a baby, baby jumper because quite often their little heads are tucked in, aren't they? So you don't want to be shoving their heads up to do a button up or something. Um, that way that allows it to be done up so yeah I really like this pattern I used let me just check this yarn that's what I've got left I had 250 gram balls and that's what I've got left um, and this is Deramore's Studio Anti-Pilling DK um, it's 100% acrylic um, and you get 125 meters in a 50 gram ball um so i just used about half of the second ball so it's probably about 75 grams i used all together um i like using acrylic for baby stuff because it washes well um you can and i always say to people when i when i make stuff for them for babies treat it like you would any other thing don't keep it for best chuck it in the washing machine chuck it in the dryer it'll be fine so as, as you can see from this it has got a little bit of a roll on the bottom so i'm going to give it a bit of a gentle block but a bit difficult to block acrylic really but um i will give it a little bit of a block um but otherwise i'm just going to say just just use it that's what it's there for use it don't keep it for best use it if it gets wrecked that's fine by me because it just means it's been loved so um so that was my my first thing that i've made uh and then and this is this is my sort of work in progress that i'm on with at the moment 
So this is another baby cardigan. This is actually a uh, commission for a, a friend has asked me to make. So she gave me the yarn and she gave me the pattern. And it's quite interesting construction. Look, this is, this is knit from the bottom up. But what you do is you knit the sleeves first, then you knit from the bottom up, and then you attach the sleeves in. And now I'm sort of decreasing for the top. Um, I, can't, I can't say I'm super enamored by this way of doing it because what happens is as you are you've added in the stitches for the sleeves um, you end up with so much tension under under the um the bit where it's joined underneath because you've got you've got you've got this kind of dynamic going on where you've where, you, where you've got you know this bit at the bottom and then you've got the huge sleeve round and it's a bit it's a bit fiddly to get your, your needles through and um, I do find that working with, with circulars makes it better um, because you're, oh, look, I've got a rainbow on my face. <laughs> I've got, I've got a, a crystal, a rainbow crystal hanging up and it's just, and it, the sun's just caught it. And so it's got, it's, it's throwing rainbows all over the room, including on me. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, so yes, it, it, it's fine on a circular needle. It's fine because you, you're obviously you, you, your um, cable bends um, and it makes it a little bit easier to hold. But if you can imagine doing this on a straight needle, you end up with these bits under so much tension that it, it ends up pulling. It ends up pulling this bit here. There, um, because it's it's pulling against that constantly. You can see it, it sort of it, it makes this gape a little bit. So. I'm not sure I'm not sure it's one I would do I would choose to do myself but anyway in the interest of sharing information I'll show you the name of the pattern it is a Serdar pattern and it's in snuggly and they actually say do it in four ply but I've been given DK to do it in the the, the yarn I'm using is oops <laughs> it's attached um it's my my yarn ball has literally just fallen apart as i as i picked it up to show you um this is happiness by uh, james c brett um it's quite a splitty yarn but the the thing about a splitty yarn is it always it knits up beautifully um sorry my tension is not brilliant as you can see my e my knitting isn't particularly even but you it, it actually is very forgiving in terms of um the 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 knit i think it's uh it does it does make for a really nice even knit um but also in common with a lot of acrylics it can be if you get warm it can be a bit squeaky so that's a bit of a bit of a downside maybe um but you know again it's acrylic it's 100 percent acrylic it washes really well um like all of these you can wash at 30 you can even iron it um you know just chuck it in absolutely fine and i always think you know baby clothes i think it's always good if you can if you can give them to somebody and they can be confident that they're not going to ruin it um i you know i always worry about if i make something out of some really beautiful yarn um and then you know they've got to do some care with it you've got enough going on when you have a baby haven't you you don't really want to be doing loads of care stuff as well um right so that's that um I'm all over the place today, aren't I? Um, yes, that's right. I was going to show you my driftwood, um, but I forgot. <laughs> I haven't got it out of my wardrobe. Hang on a second, and I'll just get it for you. It's just here. There we go. Right, driftwood. I finished it. There we go. I'm really pleased with the way it came out. Um, I think the the raspberry adds a lovely pop of colour. Um, I think the grey um, adds, you know, a little bit of a tonal difference. Um, and then the, the white just looks well, it's cream, actually, just makes the whole thing pop. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And the multi just, you know, really adds a nice bit of, of, of extra depth, I think. So, so, yeah, the buttons, I'm just going to do a close up so you can see the buttons look at those buttons these are shell buttons um and i just happen to have shell buttons in all the colors that i use for my sweater couldn't believe it when i went to get them out so obviously when i was actually putting the buttons on i kind of lined up the color with the stripe that it sort of corresponded with 
more or less anyway. Um, oh yeah, that one that one corresponds with that stripe, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah, really pleased with it. It wears really well. Um, I haven't actually blocked it, um, and I mean, yeah, it may, may benefit from blocking, but I, I think it, it, you know, it sits really well just at the moment. So yeah, I've had I've had quite a bit of wear out of that already. So um, so that was a that was a successful use of uh, lots and lots of leftovers. Um, <laughs> I did have more left over than I expected. I was thinking I might use quite a bit up, but um, but no, I've I've still got quite a bit left. <laughs> but anyway, this it does mean the stash is going down slightly, a little bit maybe. Okay, and then one of the things I wanted to show you was. Um, I went to um, Emmaus, which is a big charity shop near us, and I went there yesterday, where were we today? Monday. I went there on Saturday with my youngest because they needed a new desk for their bedroom. Um, they're currently sitting GCSEs and they don't really have a suitable desk. What they've got in there is too small, but they've got very small room anyway, so we have to be quite careful about size. And oh, they, they said to me, how much are you looking to spend? And I'm saying, as little as humanly possible, please. Um, so we, so I said, right, let's start off at Emmaus and see what we can find. Well, we found the perfect desk. Um, however, we wanted to double check that it definitely was the perfect desk. So we put a hold on it. We then went into town and we looked at various different desks and, um, and then decided we came back and decided that this is the one that we were going to get so we went back to Emmaus to get that one while we were there um we had to we had to queue a bit to um pay and I wandered off <laughs> into the uh, craft section and uh, I couldn't believe it I came across punch needle kit by Trimits um I was really stunned because I had been looking at the punch needle kits that were selling at the show and really, really liked them, really loved the idea of them. But, you know, it, I just didn't have the budget to actually buy one. Um, but I picked <laughs> I picked this up from from the charity shop for a pound. So I just thought this is perfect. I've got to just have a little go with this. Well, I've had one. I've had a tiny little go to start with. And... Um, yeah it's um it's supposed to say be kind that's meant to, that's meant to be b um it's not great <laughs> i'm just staying with it for century but it's fun oh my goodness it's fun and it does say in the instructions and it says lots of times this is a fiddly craft it will take you a while to get the hang of don't be disheartened don't give up um and i think that's that's quite key actually with something like this and i actually think the person who bought this kit or was given this kit threaded up the needle had to get two or three goes with it and just went no it's not for me so i i'm going to persevere with this the only thing is i've stopped it on the floor now um it's got embroidery thread in it and um, and because embroidery thread has all these strands in it you, i don't know whether you can see but a lot of the reason why this is is quite a mess is it's got all these little strands sort of sticking out um from it so um I think uh, I might need to sort of maybe have a go with some yarn instead. I'm not sure, um, but it was it was quite fun to do. I actually enjoyed the process of putting the the punch needle in and then pulling it out, putting it in, pulling it out. So um, so yeah, um, it was really nice. <laughs> it was a really good way to have a, a first go. Quite often you find this with um, uh, crafts, you know, cra um, craft stuff that people you know have a kit, they try something out. They abandon it almost straight away, um, and it's quite often a good way to find things. Quite, I've quite often found like cross stitch kits, big cross stitch kits, where somebody's got it, done about six stitches, decided it's not for them, and it's just gone in the charity shop box. So, um, yeah, it's worth having a look, isn't it? So, um, what else can I tell you? I think that is about it in terms of what I've actually been up to this week. I've done a lot of. Um, I've done a lot of knitting on this little baby cardigan. Um, I've spent quite a lot of time doing the paper piecing. Um, and, and I've got more baby cardigans sort of in the future um, for this for this friend. I want to do a couple more for her, maybe a little hat as well. I have got, actually, 
what have I done with it? I think I've moved it. I've got some of this yarn, actually. Oh, here it is. This is um, King Cole Summer Fall Ply. Um, oh, just put it so it's not shining in the in, quite in the light there. Um, and I'm going to use this to do a, um, a baby cardigan and a little hat because this this yarn is 55% um, bamboo, 35% cotton, 8% PBT. I don't know what PBT is. Do you know what PBT is? Anyway, it's quite soft, but it's also a little bit slubby. So it'd be nice sort of textured cardigan. Um, and I also thought, you know, this baby's going to be born in May. So um, it is just going to be really nice sort of for a you know just summer baby summer baby cardigan i thought that'd be quite good i've got quite a few of these skeins and they and i was looking on ravelry to see what people have used them for and um a lot of people have used them for socks so i did think i might try a pair of socks out of them as well so let me show you what other colors i've got these were all given to me by the way um so this this one is this one is can can this one is Neptune. I've also got Iris and more neutrals one. So this is Crystal. It's my cat meowing. <laughs> a lovely bright one here. This is oh fruit punch. I've seen this used quite a bit actually. And then the last one I've got is Tender Lick Onyx. There we go. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see how that works up. I think that'll be quite a fun one to uh, to do. So, the other thing that I was talking about right at the very beginning of the video was. I was saying that I had something to, t to talk to you about, about yarn festivals. And I was thinking about this while I was on my way home from the yarn festival and sort of yesterday as well while I was knitting. Um, I've watched lots of the podcasts from from the yarn festivals. Really, really enjoyed them. Um, I really like to see what people are, people are doing, what other people are drawn to as well. You know, I filmed the things that, that interested me um, and it was really quite interesting to see what different things that other people um, filmed as well. So. Um, do have a look at the other sort of podcasts as, as well that are from the East Anglia Yarn Festival because um, a lot of them have picked up on completely different things than, than I did. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was it was really interesting. Um, I when I went to the yarn show and, and I've talked about this quite a bit on on here. Um, you know, I don't have I don't have a big income. Um, I'm currently um, not working. Well, I've just started going back to work after three years with Covid. With, with long COVID. I'm also a widow, so um, I don't have other family support um, around me. I don't have another income into the house. So my budget is is fairly low, and particularly for things like, you know, yarn crafting and things like that. And I've talked about, you know, I've got lots of lovely friends who give me yarn, um, so I'm very fortunate in that. Um, but I, And I also love to scour the um, uh, charity shops to see what I can find as well. And it, you know, it occurred to me when I went to the show that, you know, we film all these beautiful yarn when we're going around and it, it is absolutely gorgeous. It is lovely. It's absolutely fantastic. But I'm really aware of the fact that, you know, it's it's probably out of the budget that you've got if you're not on a, you know, if, if you if you're on a low income. And let's face it, with the cost of living and things, we're, we're all our incomes are all affected. Um, but you know you you may find that it's just not uh, something that that's in your budget to buy beautiful as these skeins of yarn are it's you know three meals for a family or during the week or more um, so it, it's it's something that's maybe out of your budget and I think it'd be quite easy um, for for you to look at these you know look at all the yarn shows look at the if the footage about it and just think this is not for me. This is this is not something that I can purchase anything from. It's just not for me. Um, and, you know, I, I just want to say to you, think, you know, 
I think there's lots you can get from a yarn show. And it's not just a case of that you need to go with hundreds of pounds ready to spend on, on yarn. There is so much that you can get from a yarn show. Um, don't be intimidated by the fact that, you know, a lot of this yarn costs a lot of money. There is still so much you can get from it. Um, it's lots of... The thing I love about yarn shows is I find them a great place to get inspiration so um that may be from looking at the yarn seeing looking at the different colors um or it's you know sometimes it's from just looking at the things that they're they're selling all the little add-on things as well um and i also love to look at what people are wearing when you come to a yarn show now in the, at the east anglia yarn festival they actually had a um a couple of patterns a knitting pattern and a crochet pattern um which you could make into your a garment and take to the show and you could wear a ribbon that said that you'd actually made you know this garment you had a big orange sort of ribbon um they had a a wonderful sort of crochet cardigan and then they had a lovely sort of knitted jumper with um sort of a yoke um effect on it they were really really beautiful um i will try and remember to link to the patterns <laughs> down below i keep saying this and i think as i go back through the video i'm gonna to to write that down and say oh yeah i did say i was going to do that didn't i terrible memory okay so yes yeah, so, i mean have a look at what other people are wearing ask them what they're wearing i saw somebody walking around wearing the most fantastic sweater it had cows on the yoke and then at the bottom it had a flying saucer <laughs> and i just i love the sort of the reference or was it the other way around? Did you have flying saucers around the top and a cow at the bottom? I can't remember now. Maybe that would have made more sense. I absolutely loved her jumper and I was too shy to go up and ask her if she had the pattern for it or, or what, where she'd found it. But it was, oh, it was so fantastic. And loads of people, um, you know, see see things that they love. And in fact, actually, a couple of people came up to me and said, Where do you, where's your pattern for your cardigan from? Um, I was also wearing a handmade dress and people were asking me about that as well. And... I know from my point of view, I love to tell people about, you know, things, you know, where I where I got the pattern from um, or where I got the fabric from or, you know, which design I've used for the cardigan or whatever. So other people like to share as well. So ask them, you know, see what if you see something you really like on somebody, ask them about the pattern. Um, and then also have a look at the, the samples that are on the shores, on the stalls. So a lot of stalls have um their their um yarn knitted up into different patterns um shawls are fantastic for showing off yarn and you will see lots and lots of shawls um i saw loads and loads of stephen west shawls which are amazing you can really spot a stephen west shawl because the construction is usually quite quite intricate and um and he usually uses like about three or four different um skeins of yarn as well and you know they so you maybe might look at them and think oh you know these are fantastic i picked up an, um, a couple of ideas for patterns which i talked about in my yarn festival uh, podcast um from stuff that i'd seen at, at the store at the um at the show um there was uh, skein queen had um a couple of uh, woolly wormhead hats well woolly wormhead if i'm not mistaken her patterns are free on ravelry or at least some of them are so there's lots to sort of look out there as well and also you might see patterns that people that there are of garments that they're actually selling um where you can just buy the pattern um so for example you may look and see you know something absolutely that they sell the yarn for and it's hundreds of pounds to make it but you could buy the pattern and then you could make it in a cheaper yarn who's to say you couldn't do that there's nobody there's nobody gatekeeping knitting or crochet you can do what you want with with what you want and feel free feel enthusiastic feel encouraged feel confident to do that you know you do not have to use the very expensive yarn you could just get the pattern and then just make, make what you want to make um and then another thing as well when i was going around i noticed that virtually all the stalls were having um would have a, a, a yarn sale bin um or they'd have discounts on you know certain certain yarns quite often they would be end of stock um you know end of line um bits and pieces and you could get something you know a real bargain so i got um from watercolor and lace i got an end of line um skein of a 
beautiful it was silk and uh, merino wool i think absolutely gorgeous now full price that was i think 19 pounds and i got it for 13 pounds so you know quite a bit of a saving huge well huge saving really on the actual cost and it meant that a, a skein of yarn that was out of outside of my budget then became in my budget and it was although it was a really sort of um uh treat purchase for me it was it was also you know it was something that i could buy that i would other, wouldn't otherwise been able to buy um and if you remember also from my from my podcast i keep talking about my podcast don't i um i i bought some bag bits for bag making from uh, one of the other people who was um uh, felt by bridget she was selling lots of beautiful felt um felted goods um but she used to make bags and she was selling off the bits for making a bag so again i picked up those stuff for a bargain she was happy to get rid of them I was happy to purchase them so we were all happy um, so it is worth having a look you know have a look in the in the sort of you know what's in the sale bins what's the end of line stuff you know if you just want to buy one skein you know to make a lovely shawl or a pair of socks then you know that's the way that's the way to do it you can get the you know the end of line things as well if the, if the things at the normal price are a bit out of your range um, also have a think about you know other little things that people sell so um i picked up um the stitch markers from um and kathleen Begg. um i also saw lots of places had like little pin badges for sale or they'd have little notions um so you, little tins with with um stitch markers in um things like that there were lovely coasters under the olive tree i think sold beautiful um wooden coasters with with funny words on and stuff um or you know knit pattern or a crochet pattern they were lovely um so there's lots of things you so you can still come away with something from a yarn show maybe not that big ball of yarn but you can come away with something for under a fiver quite easily there were lots and lots of things that you could purchase at the ink sangling yarn festival for under five and i think that's the same for all yarn festivals there's always things all the different price points so you still get to come away with something as well um entry fees entry fees are often quite low because they just want to get people in the door um the uh, East Anglia Yarn Festival, I think it was £8 if you paid um, a head. Um, and that's the way to do it, is book a head, um, pay for your ticket um, in advance because then you'll get the better deal. I think it was £8 in advance and £10 on the door. So again, it's not a huge expense. It's, you know, cup of coffee and a piece of cake sort of, you know, price. Um, so that's, you know, something to remember as well. Um, and as you're going round the stalls, most of them will have cards um, available and if you ask for their uh, cards or you can pick a card up um, and then what is I'll pick the card up and then I'll flick it over and I will write on the other side um, what the um, uh, what it was that I liked I particularly liked at their shawl so I might put you know pink skein of yarn or you know really nice stitch markers or something like that and then that way I've got the card I can keep it handy if I have more money at um, some point like a birthday or Christmas money I can go back to that and think oh yeah I really like that thing from that person and then you can go back and buy it from them later in the year so and, and to all the to all the people who actually um, uh, make things and actually have stores are the vendors of the stores I love those cards I collect them I keep them and I use them so please uh, continue to do that because I find that really helpful um and one other tip um take your take your own lunch with you take a packed lunch take a flask of coffee or tea or whatever take some drinks with you um if you if you're able to buy um, a cup of tea um or a piece of cake or something when you're there then that's fantastic what often happens though at a lot of yarn festivals is there are long queues for the food um so that to me is time that you're taking out the time that you could be spending looking around the show um so it's and also it's an extra expense as well so you know there's there is there's always places where you can go and sit and um eat your own food and drink your own drinks and that is absolutely fine you know if you want to do that so you know i think all these things mean that you can go to a yarn show with with a very low budget or no budget and come away with 
a really nice selection of bits and pieces or lots of ideas or just it's just a chance to meet other knitters you know you get talking to people when you're sitting having something to eat um, you get to talk to the vendors um, they're always happy to chat about um, what they're making and and doing and stuff so it's a really really great a great day out so do think about it even if you thought before I don't know that I don't know that I can manage a yarn festival. I don't know that it's really something that that is for me. I'm not really in the market to buy these really expensive skeins of yarn. That's fine. There's lots and lots of things that you can get out of a yarn show. While you're still supporting all the vendors and you are getting to see what's going on and you may be inspired, you know, to create something of your own from what you've seen at the show. So there you go. That's my take on yarn shows and um i hope that was interesting to you and makes you feel um happy about going to them i i love them i love yarn shows they're so much fun so i think that's pretty much all i've got to tell you today um so this next week i'm going to be working i'm going to be finishing off this baby cardigan um i'm going to do i'm going to do another i'm going to do a cardigan in this this yarn from uh, the summer from King Cole. Um, this is the Can Can one. And I think it's the Can Can one. Yeah, it's Can Can one. Um, and I'm going to work on my patchwork. Um, I haven't shown you my Fair Isle scarf this week because I haven't done anything on it. Um, so, but I will probably try and do a little bit more on that. I'll try and do like a pattern on it a week, I think. So, you know, we can sort of see a bit of gradual progress. Although I'm very aware of the fact that we're now sort of moving into summer, well, spring, summer sort of weather. So it's not really going to get warm till next winter. So I, I, but I don't really want to put it completely on hold for now. And also, if you remember from the yarn show, I did buy some beautiful batting. I'm just looking at it down here on the floor. That's why I'm looking down to my left. A beautiful batting from Yarn Tings. Um, and um, I'm thinking about um, putting that on the spinning wheel this week and just seeing if I can spin something. But I'm a little, I've lost my confidence with spinning. I haven't done any since before I got COVID. So that's three years. And uh, so I've, I've kind of kind of lost my confidence with that a bit. But I think it's a bit like, pulling a pint or if <laughs> you work behind a bar or um, riding a bicycle I think probably muscle memory means I'll just get straight back into it and it should be fine so so yes yeah, so that's all I've got to say to you so thank you to thank you for watching thank you to all my new subscribers um, I'm so excited I really am and it's just so lovely to have you all with me on my uh, knitting and crocheting and crafting journey. And uh, hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye.